This is the GT710. It's a display adapter and was never intended for gaming, but it's still one of the best selling graphics cards on Amazon, and I want to see if we can force it to run games by overclocking the f out of it. It supports DirectX 12, so it can start most modern applications, but it has a very weak core and only 2 gigs of VRAM. So we're going to overclock it to the point of self destruction and truly put this pathetic graphics card to the test. Now, there's a lot of different 710s, and ours happens to be the low profile version by EVGA. I didn't seek this card out in particular, but typically they go for $25 on eBay, and I got this one in an untested GPU lot for only $4. One of the biggest issues with these cards is not necessarily how crappy they are, but also how many different versions exist. It's normal to have different clock speeds and VRAM configurations, but some 710s use entirely different graphics processors which can heavily impact performance. It's kind of like the laptop version of the 4090. They're both called the same card, but they have two completely different processors. Luckily, ours is one of the more powerful ones and has the GK208B graphics processor based on the Kepler 2.0 architecture and the 28 nanometer process. <coughs> Aside from its usage in GT700 cards, its processor was also used in laptops for the GeForce 900 series, but hasn't been used since. It comes equipped with 192 shading units, 16 texture mapping units, and 8 ROPs with a base core clock of 954 MHz and 2GB of DDR3 memory with a 64-bit bus width. Clearly, it doesn't have a lot to work with, but it's better than Intel GMA. Wait, does it say magic on the side? It's like the engineers don't even know how this thing works, so they just named it magic. So, why does this card even exist? Well, it's cheap, it's versatile, and that's really its only selling points. It supports modern graphics APIs, doesn't require external power cables, and its 19 watt TDP means you can shove it into just about anything. It also has three video ports with VGA, HDMI, and DVI, so it'll work with just about any monitor. And aside from eggheads being just like snowflakes and the card performing worse than this guy's 10 year old GPU, it generally has decent reviews on Amazon. People cited for being decent at running old games and that it was a nice upgrade from an integrated graphics processor, but at stock speeds it'll definitely slow down in the modern environment. Also it turns out this isn't actually the worst 700 series graphics card. Something called the GT705 exists, which is an OEM card used in pre-builds. It has about a third of the total transistors of the 710, and it's worse in just about every way, so stay away from it. That card goes for about $15 on eBay, and for only $10 more, you can easily find this one. And based on the benchmarks, it definitely offers $25 worth of performance. Speaking of which, the test PC we'll be using this GPU with has the quad-core Intel i7-4790 with 16GB of RAM and Windows 7 running on an SSD. Get some of these cables out of the way, try not to cut ourselves on the jaggedy metal, and then you stick it in right there. We also gotta stick the hard drive back on because that fell off. And yes, I know the processor is old, but it's better than the 4130 I was previously using, so consider subscribing so I can afford more PC parts. And if you happen to be looking for cheap software keys, KeysFan has just the thing for you. Now January 31st was the last day the Windows 10 Pro and Home Download were offered for sale by Microsoft, but for those who don't want to use Windows 11, Windows 10 license keys are still available from third parties before the operating system is no longer supported. Luckily, KeysFan, the sponsor of this video, is running a site-wide sale and using promo code GT50 in your cart saves you 50% off of Windows 10 or Windows 11 activation keys. They also have a sale on Microsoft Office keys and using code GT62 will save you 62%. The license you buy is also for a lifetime activation and the key remains valid if the memory or hard drive is formatted or replaced and is only invalid if the motherboard is changed. So check it out, you're bound to find something you'll like. I provided links in the description that'll take you directly to their website and once again I'd like to thank KeysFan for sponsoring this video. So just how does it hold up in 2023? Well, we weren't off to a great start, my SSD died, and we came to the mutual decision that it's best if we parted ways. The first test we did was with 3D Mark to get a solid baseline reading before cranking up the clock speeds. It kind of looked like a really fast PowerPoint presentation, but it was on par with other 710s and got a graphics score of 758. So it was time to overclock it. This took a while, and along the way we had some very thorough artifacting, but eventually found the sweet spot for this GPU and the VRAM, both running at 300MHz faster than stock speeds. Running 3D Mark again, you could visually tell it was spitting out more frames than before, and it increased its graphics score to 1000 
and 6. That's nearly 300 points higher than average, and our 710 was nothing short of legendary. The first actual game we tested was Grand Theft Auto 5, which was actually playable. This is a display adapter, you're not supposed to game on this thing, but with the low settings and a resolution of 720p, managed to pull off an average frame rate of 48 FPS. It was playable, stable, and somehow less horrible than I expected. Now I wasn't able to run a lot of games on Windows 7 due to compatibility issues, but BeamNG Drive also ran better than expected. With the lowest settings, the game wasn't really playable in 1080p, but dropping it down to 720p increased the average frame rate to 29 FPS. Visually, the game looked like it was running on a PS1, but the system requirements side of 550Ti, which is a much more powerful card. And although it didn't look good, it was just playable enough. But no one really wants to play games in 720p, so for Rocket League, we were able to pull off 1080. It was with the low settings, so some edges were jaggedy, and the closer you looked, the worse it became. But it got an average of 46 FPS in a relevant, modern-ish game, which is all you can really ask for. But you can't spell low-end gaming without Minecraft, and in the latest release, with a render distance of 8 chunks in 1080p, got an average of 123 FPS. That's kind of amazing. Granted, Minecraft is not exactly graphically advanced but it was buttery smooth. Advanced mod packs will still probably tank performance but it's more than enough to play vanilla. Left 4 Dead 2 was the last game I tried out and with a mixture of settings in 1080p only got 38 FPS. The settings were skewed a bit to the higher side so I wasn't exactly going easy on the 710 but given the game's age I thought it would be able to hold up a bit better than it did. If you were going to actually play it you definitely want to lower the settings a bit but it was playable enough in its current state. So overclocking can sort of save the 710. It's not going to give you a great experience in most AAA games, but it can play older and esports titles. We also got kind of lucky with ours in that it's one of the best graphics processors for a 710 and we were able to run a very aggressive overclock, so it's not necessarily representative of the whole. Also increasing the core voltage as much as I did paired with such a high overclock greatly increases the card's chance of failure, and it's probably not a great idea to constantly run it at such speeds. This was more of a let's see how far we can push this crappy old graphics card sort of video, unless you find one for like 10 I can't really recommend it, and if you're looking for an ultra low budget performance graphics card, I'd say just get a 7950 or try to find a GTX 960 on the low. I also wanted to talk about the innovations and the intricacies of the GTX 700 series, but I couldn't bring myself to do it in a video about a 710. I'll reserve that for when I get a 780 or something, cause that is a much more interesting card. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Consider leaving a like or subscribing because it genuinely helps me out. If you want to join the community, there's a link to the official Jandai Discord server in the description along alongside a few donation methods that directly support the channel. If you have any questions or related comments, then leave them below and I'll be sure to respond to them. That's about it. Have a great day. Bye.